Yeah, it's drawing two watts. Yeah, that ain't working, is it? So I've been asked to have a look at this C-Tech charger here. Apparently it's not working. I don't know exactly what kind of not working it is. If it's got no power, if it's just not charging, I don't know. I have actually opened up and had a look already. I have seen some problems. But we're going to power it up and see what we get out of it. And we'll go from there. Turn it on. Nothing so far. It is drawing half a watt. So there's some kind of life. Mode's not doing anything. I don't know if this is a smart charger where it needs to actually detect a battery presence before it will do anything. Right now it's just like nothing. So, okay. Output's completely dead, but it is drawing some power. Let's check if it smells. Yeah, seems right. Let's inject some voltage into here to see if it needs to detect a battery before it actually work. I've got my power supply hooked up. I haven't turned it on yet. I haven't turned on the charger yet. I'm going to turn the power supply on first, see if there's any massive current draws. We should see voltage on here when I turn it on. I set to 12 volts. And 12 volts, no massive current draws. So that's looking promising. Let's turn the power on to the charger. And that is no different. Let's turn the power supply back off. Yep, yeah, there's nothing. There's no output at all. So the only power we've got is coming out of the power supply. The charger is not outputting anything at all. So, okay, let's put it apart. All right, I've opened it up. Let's just check to see if it's safe to touch anything. There's a big capacitor here, big bulk cap, high voltage one. Let's measure across that. One volt, that's fine, that's all right. Now I can actually smell that there's some odors coming from this side and there's actually some oil, like residue on this, that's wet. And there's also some here too. Either something's got in it and maybe spilt on it. I can actually look underneath this cover here. This heat sink, I don't know whether you can see it. Look under there, you see those capacitors bulging? Yeah, that's a good start. And none of the problem that's present, you can see down here, that resistor, it's all burnt out. So I think that's probably a symptom of the capacitors failing. Do you ever read a code of that or not? I'm not sure. I might have to go searching on the internet for internal photos of these things. Maybe even a sticker diagram if I'm lucky to find out what that part is. But the first band looks like orange. So that narrows it down slightly. Begins with a three. And here's the rear side of it. And look, scratched off part numbers. <laughs> Seriously, C-Tech? Seriously? Anyway, see if we can see any problems on the back here. That's looking a bit yuck. Could this be flux residue? There is flux all over the board where it hasn't been cleaned off the manufacturing it's absolutely covered in flux so let's have a look around see if we see any popped components or anything like that anything that looks bad but um, I think it's probably just those capacitors another one there which is scratched off I don't know why they're bothered anyway same for this that's scratched off it's just the bloody optocouple for god's sake if we look you can probably actually get numbers of it still even though it's been scratched this up here is looking particularly ugly now that resistor is right there, All right? So there's that was burnt resistor, and that's going between that component there and here. So I have to clean this up a bit and see if there's anything actually wrong with that part. It could be blown. I have to be really careful with that. See if I can figure out what value it is. I may be able to measure it still. Sometimes they'll be burnt, but they'll still be measurable. I might try that now. Let's try measuring it. Seven K. It's not looking promising, is it? Probe again, try and get better probing. 7.6k and increasing. Swap the probes around in case it's external circuitry causing that. Then we're getting 0.7, was it? 0.7k, yeah, so there's something else across there which is causing that. I'll see a diode junction of some kind. So that resistor is probably not doing anything at all. Let's check this resistor out, and I've also put some fresh solder on everything. Try and help it to desolder. Including those capacitors we've got to replace. And I'm not actually confident that this is even going to work. So it's almost like it was um, orange, brown, black. But I don't know. It's also got a gold band on the end. So it's like orange, brown, black, gold, gold. That's what it looks like. Hard to tell. Can't make sense of it really. Don't know what it is. Could be anything. So I have to remove the heat sink from this thing. I'll see so I can get to the capacitors. Slide that out. So you can see how bad those are. So I'll remove the heat sink. There's the capacitors there. Bit of a mess, as you can see, slightly bulgy and definitely leaked. So uh, yep, that needs cleaning up as well. I'm kind of reluctant to put brand new caps in this thing because of the fact that well, it still may not work anyway. 
I know I've tried to repair the SeaTac chargers before, like different versions of these. I've never had any luck. So I replaced the caps, put the heatsink back on again. Now I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with this resistor here. Now I think it's 310 with either a silver or gold band. Now silver or gold band with also a gold band at the end. So I think that's either a 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 multiplier. So it's either 31 ohms or 3.1 ohms. I'm guessing. Yeah, I don't know what to do. I'll try and find a picture of this thing online. I doubt I will find one somehow. So I did a little look around. I couldn't find anything exactly right. There's different versions of this thing apparently. On the EV blog form it actually mentions R26, which is what this one is, being burnt. And a discussion there was a saying that this is a 3.3 ohm resistor. Maybe that brown looking band is actually orange. It's possible. It's probably discolored. So it's probably 330 with the silver. Or the gold maybe. Probably gold. So I want to do, I've got these ones here. I set these in parallel up the current handling. Just going to double check the value, make sure they're about right. It's probably not too critical. Let's see what they are. 7.6. 7.6 ohms. So it's about 3.8. Slightly high. But it's probably close enough. We'll whack those together. I wonder if I can set leads together and twist it and show it through the holes. We'll try that. There you go. Resistors are fitted. I reckon we should fold this back over into the chassis and see if it powers up. Right, let's try this out. I've got the meter ready to go. I'm not going to inject power. I'm just going to see what happens first off. I'm not going to put it back together. I'm just going to actually just leave it sitting in there. I may need to push the button on here. We'll do it like this first, see if any smoke, magic smoke comes out. Power it up. It's drawing two watts. Something going fizzle. Here we go. Something just fizzled and burnt. Magic smoke. Yep, it's drawing two watts. Yeah, that ain't working, is it? It's fried. That's what I thought. So, yep, yeah, so it's two resistors I put in, burning. So, it's probably some issue with the board over here, one of these transistors or something. So, I'm going to call it, I'm going to say, not fixable. I'm not going to waste my time trying to figure out what all this circuitry is. I said I have a quick look at them for them. I can't promise you it's not likely I better fix it. Because these things don't have a great track record. And I'm not really willing to put that much time into fixing a cheap battery charger. So, oh, we've got some magic smoke. That's entertaining, I suppose. Thanks for watching. Check out the other videos down below. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Patreon support link over there. Catch you later.